We're getting close to wrapping up this unit of study on the introduction to Newton's laws, and this problem presents a um, appropriate challenge level to get a sense of where you stand and assess your understanding of how to apply Newton's laws. So it's another elevator problem, and uh, we're told that the person in the elevator has a mass of 80 kilograms, and he's standing on a 20 kilogram platform, so the sort of elevator that he's in is less massive than the person himself. The elevator's mass is 20 kilograms. Okay, so he um, stands in this elevator that's suspended by a rope, but he grabs hold of the very same rope and uses that to either hold himself still or accelerate him in um, either direction. Now in this problem we're told, why don't we just go ahead and let g equal 10 meters per second squared to make the math easier. And then we're also given a couple of assumptions. Assume that friction is negligible and that all of the rope segments remain vertical. In other words, as he pulls on it, he doesn't put an angle in the rope. Okay, so part one the platform and the person are at rest. What's the tension in the rope? Seems straightforward enough. Our answers to all problems related to Newton's laws start with a free body diagram. So this is the question is, what do we want to make the free body diagram for? Do we want to make it for the entire system, which would have a mass of 100 kilograms? Or should we make the free body diagram just for the person by himself? Or for that matter, should we make the free body diagram for the um, elevator or the platform by itself? Well, I'm going to uh, propose we make a free body diagram for the entire system. So this dot represents 100 kilograms of mass. Now, what are all the forces that are acting? One force it seems we never get away from is the pull of gravity. So we have mg. How about we make the mass of the person, symbolize that with a capital M, and the mass of the platform with a lowercase m. So this would actually be lowercase m and capital M added together times g. Okay, what other forces? There's no friction, there's no air resistance, there's normal force. The person's feet contact the floor. However, we're making a free body diagram for the entire system. So that contact force between the feet and the floor is internal to the system. It would be external to the person had we been making a free body diagram just for that part of the system. But we're making a free body diagram for the whole system. So yeah, normal force is not external. Tension is definitely an external force. But notice that the tension is applied directly to the platform. So tension is applied here, pulling upward. And the tension is also applied to the person. So the tension pulls up in two locations on this system. So we could draw it as such. Tension pulling up on the platform and that same amount of tension again pulling up on the person. Or it would be just as good Either of these would be valid options to draw it as such. Quantity little m plus big M times g, and then a vector of equal length in the other direction. Now, why equal length? Because we're told the platform and the person are at rest. So it's a case of equilibrium. The net force has to be 0. So we can say pointing up is a value of T, right? For some folks, that might be confusing. Why is it double the tension? If you look at it directly, it's pretty clear. The tension is applied in two places on the system. All right, so what is the tension of the rope? Well, all we have to do is set the upward vector of 2t equal to the downward vector that's equal to the sum of the masses times g. So in other words, T is equal to the total mass of the whole system times G divided by 2. 
which would be 100 kilograms times 10 meters per second squared, all divided by 2. Oh, this is 500 newtons. All right. Now the person pulls on the rope so that the acceleration of the person and the platform is 2 meters per second upward. What's the tension in the rope under these new conditions? So, hey, how about once again, we choose to make a free body diagram for the whole system. So whether he's at rest or accelerating, it doesn't change the fact that the tension in the rope is applied in two locations. So we have basically the same free body diagram with a slight difference. If I label the upward vector as 2t, I note that the length of that vector now must be slightly greater than the weight vector, which is little m plus big M combined times g. How do I know that it's bigger? Because the acceleration is upward. It's no longer in equilibrium. In fact, because 2 times the tension is greater than the total weight, I know that the net force is just the difference between those quantities. Our net force is 2t minus the weight of the system. Okay? Well, by Newton's second law, I replace net force with ma. But because this is a free body diagram for all of the mass of the system, when I say I'm replacing it with ma, I'm not going to say ma equals 2t minus total weight nor am I going to say that capital M-A, no, no, no. The correct expression would be the total mass of the whole system times A is equal to 2T minus the total weight. Okay, so um, if we're trying to solve for the tension, then we just need to do a little bit of algebra in our third step. 2t is equal to m plus m times a uh, plus m plus m times g. Or the tension is equal to the mass of the entire system times the quantity a plus g all divided by 2. So if we want the numerical value, it's 100 kilograms multiplied by 2 plus 10 meters per second squared, all divided by 2. This 2, remember, was given in the problem, accelerating upward at 2 meters per second squared, and we're just letting g equal 10. Okay, so 12 times 100 is 1,200. 1,200 divided by 2 is 600. So that makes sense. That's reasonable. Shouldn't the tension increase? It went from 500 newtons to hold him at rest up to 600 newtons for him to be able to accelerate in the upward direction. Final question. Under these conditions, how much force is exerted by the platform on the person? Ah. So that quantity I said earlier would be an internal force to the system. The contact force between his feet and the floor is external to the person uh, himself. So I'm going to make a different free body diagram. This dot no longer represents the 100 kilograms of the whole system. This just represents the 80 kilograms of the person. Okay, so let's picture it carefully one more time. It's sort of like asking, what would a bathroom scale read if he were standing on it? I guess his arm, both arms are pulling here. Ooh, long arms. All right. What forces are acting? All right, all right. There's gravity, there's weight, capital MG. What else? Uh, I see some tension pulling upward, but I don't see 2T. The tension that's applied in this strand is not acting on the person. It's acting on the platform. So when we were making a free body diagram for the system, that had to be included. But now that we're only making a free body diagram for the person, 
there's an upward force of T, and then there's also a contact force, what the scale would read, the normal force between his feet and the platform. So we'll call that N. Maybe the length of my vectors needs to be adjusted, because after all, the person's accelerating upward. So if I make this free body diagram by putting one upward vector, the upward vector is the combination of normal force and tension added together. The downward force is mg. And hopefully it looks like the upward force is slightly longer in magnitude than the downward force. In other words, the net force must be equal to n plus t minus mg. I replace net force, according to Newton's second law, with ma. ma equals n plus t minus mg. We're trying to solve for this normal force. So the normal force is equal to ma plus mg minus t. We could factor out the capital M. So it's capital M times the quantity A plus G all minus T. So it's equal to 80 times 12 minus, we already found the value of T. Under this condition, the person accelerates upward at 2 meters per second squared, and that tension is 600 newtons. So the contact force is 80 times 12 minus 600. In other words, it's 960 newtons minus 600 newtons, giving us a value of 360 newtons. I'd like to show you that our answer is correct by um, double checking the work. The one free body diagram we've not made yet is the free body diagram for the platform. Let's try that. Now this dot represents 20 kilograms of mass. Here's a little insight into Newton's third law. If the platform pushes up on the person's feet, then the person's feet pushes down on the platform with an equal amount. OK, then also acting on the platform is tension. Uh, the person is holding the rope still, OK? That hasn't changed. But that tension at that point is not acting on the platform. It's acting on the person. So what forces are acting? Lowercase mg, the platform does weigh something. There's an upward force of tension. I think I've probably drawn this vector mg much too long. It's only 20 kilograms, not 80 kilograms. So that's a rather short vector. OK, and what else? Oh, yeah. The platform pushes up on the person, but we're not interested in forces on the person. The person pushes downward on the platform, so there's a downward force. That's normal force. So it looks like net force, in this case, would be equal to uh, oh the system is going to accelerate upward so we're going to take forces in the direction of acceleration and subtract forces opposite the direction of acceleration so our net force is T minus the sum of N and mg okay and our net force according to Newton's second law should be ma Here's what I hope. I hope when we plug in all the values, I've distributed this negative sign. I hope when we plug in all the values and solve for A, that it comes out to be the very two meters per second squared that was given to us to state the problem. So let's try it. A is T minus N minus mg all over m. So A is equal to, OK, we know the tension is 600 newtons. We know the contact force 
the floor pushes up on the feet with 360 newtons, so the feet push down on the platform with 360 newtons. 600 minus 360 minus 20 times 10, we'll just call that 200, all divided by 20. Okay, let's see. This means acceleration is equal to 200 and 360, that's 560. 560 off of 600 is 40. So we have a net force of 40 newtons and a mass of 20 kilograms. Aha, we do indeed get 2 meters per second squared. That feels good, doesn't it? Okay, thanks for watching.